Hello, 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 all our lovely listeners. It's so good to be back. Uh, It's me, Daddy Ethan. And I am Daddy Fields, and this is the next episode of Daddy Dialogues. Daddy Dialogues, here we are. And today is super, super exciting because we actually have a daddy guest. And yes, our first this, guest. And, and, and our first guest. Fact, so this is extra, extra, extra special. special. Oh yeah, definitely. And 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 and, and his boy. We are so mm-hmm. fortunate to have him. Mm-hmm. So um, why don't we launch right in and ask Papa Terry uh, and Roey, who tell us a little bit about yourselves, how you met, your relationship, oh. how, and, and the ABDL lifestyle. How'd you come into it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm Terry. I'm Papa Terry. Um, I'll just start off my side, anyways. Uh, I I got into diapers a long time ago. I'm I, you know I'm I'm 46 now, so mm-hmm. um, probably about 40 years ago. And um, as I was growing up, you know, I had this interest in it. I thought I was the only one. Um, that's probably what most people our age have said. I agree. Uh, no no internet, so you know you didn't have that ability. Uh, to, you know, learn about these things. And then um, probably uh, around 2008, I started to discover that it was uh, more prevalent than I thought, you know. Mm-hmm. At, and and in 2008, I had already been with my husband of four years, but we, we had just got married in 2008. So it was kind of a, kind of a, a whirlwind at the time. Because mm-hmm. here we are, we we said our vows to each other. We got married, da 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 da, and then you know I wanted to kind of dabble a little bit in the in the community. Did your husband know at the time that you were into diapers? <laughs> no, that's when I told him too. Okay, you should probably explain that um, your husband is not me. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're not. My I husband. was. He did not marry me at eighty years. <laughs> of course not. Okay. <laughs> No, he's just a baby. He's young, but yes. uh, my husband, my husband's a couple years younger than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so we, we, we have an open relationship. Um, our relationship is going on 20 years now. Uh, marriage Congrats. About 16 years. Thank you. Wow. So it's, it's, it's been a while, it's been a wild ride. Um, you know, just, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that it's, just been an interesting journey it was a journey <laughs> yeah. yeah so um and 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 growy isn't my first little i i i actually didn't start out wanting to be a daddy i i kind oh. of i kind of got into being a daddy because my first little was like you know you're you're like my dad you you, mm-hmm. you treat me like that and you know, oh. and, you know i i want you to be my papa i'm oh, okay you know, so I was new. I had to kind of grow into that role. Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. So when you were, so you spoke about getting into diapers when you were younger. Yeah. Um, what was it about diapers that you like just sparked your interest? I, you know, what's funny. I really don't know. I would say curiosity more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, my sister was just born. So, um, you know, where there was the opportunity, I was young, I was only like, like I say, around six, I think. And, um, and, and maybe I did it because I wanted attention. I don't know. But I liked, I liked how I felt in them. And, you know, it just kind of became one of those things. So growing up, anytime I could get my hands on some, yeah, I Mm -hmm. I would wear them. I didn't really Mm -hmm. use them for anything, but I would wear them. Um, I would always get caught though. I was never, ever good at hiding. <laughs> never said all about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I would say it was more curiosity than anything, but I mm-hmm. think it was also a source of, a uh, of attention because like I say, I had, I had a new sister. I had no other siblings. Time. Yeah. So, yeah. Everybody, so everybody it's were... interesting to hear everybody's, oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, it's interesting. Everybody has like a a theory of the etiology or the development of these uh, experiences, and you know that's one I have not heard before. 
for I attention. Know either. That's what I love about just learning what people's mm-hmm. origin stories were, because you get some really fascinating ones. And absolutely, um, like Ethan, I've never, but it makes perfect sense that you know you be wanting diapers as a as a way to say, "Hey, mom and dad, I'm still here. I'm here too." Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think that's cool. I had. To, what about I you, Shelly? So. <laughs> Anywho, what's up? Uh, I mean, I was, I'm interested to hear from Shelby as well. What what, what was oh. your experience? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, it started with a documentary from National Geographic. <laughs> I was tiny, like I was so little. I still do not remember what the what the documentary was about i just saw mm-hmm. a guy on a crib wearing diapers and that's all i remember about it i was wow just, i was just there i mean for some reason i just saw that and then that kind of just spiked my curiosity right away mm-hmm. i started to like be like why is that guy doing that why did you know and i never really delved too much into it i kind of got my feet wet with like the you know like maybe stuff you're your underwear with a towel or something like that to kind of mimic the feeling. But I never really understood why I was doing those things. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was always like, so puzzling to me why, or like what caused me interest about it. And then when I turned 15 um, and I started to go into social media and see like people, you know, from my town, because I'm not um, American, I'm not from the U S I'm Colombian. So I saw people that were local to me, which was, you know, pretty interesting because that also told me that this is not something they do only in the U.S., but there's a yeah of out there and there's a bunch of like, you know, people just like us that do it and they're everywhere. They're hiding because, you know, the, mm-hmm. the video scene outside of like America or like Europe and stuff, it's just very, very minimal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I got contacted by a guy. Um that I thought he was really nice and stuff. And he kind of introduced me into it. He then he um, introduced me to some of his friends. And then I kind of just, you know, went with the flow. I never really stopped to think like, why am I doing this? But I just Good. You know, started <laughs> learning about all these new things. And he introduced me to a dumb. And the guy was a lot into BDSM and ropes and bondage and you know, doing sessions and stuff. And so he also was um, interested in diapers. He was not mainly an AVDL dom or anything like that. He was mm-hmm. just a regular BDSM dom, but um, he resonated a lot with diapers. So that's why I kind of started as more as a BDSM thing than AVDL. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. it kind of just, the more I learned about my body and the things that I liked and stuff. And then, well, eight years later, here I am just, you know. So what was more appealing about, I guess, being uh, like a a diaper sub or as opposed to like an ABDL or or an AB guy? What was more appealing about that for you? The thing is that diapers are a very big fetish of mine, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. they are so the sexual part of diapers are something that it's really big that goes into like my personality and stuff like that that's why i like them a lot Mm -hmm. and then the second thing is that uh it gives you kind of like a a space where you can express yourself you have um, a bunch of scary stuff that when you're growing up and you're becoming an adult that you don't know how to deal with and so it's kind of like an escape or a coping mechanism mechanism for some or mm-hmm. you know just kind of like a safe place where you can you know sit back relax and just be yourself i love that so, can i ask a, a next question follow up sure yeah uh so we understand that you two are in a full-time ABDL dynamic with, you know, you're the daddy, Papa, Terry, and uh, you are the baby, um, Shoei, Growy, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, uh, it's not common still. So can you tell us like how does the dynamic work day to day? Yes, all that. But I would actually be interested. How did you two meet? 
And oh, how did you, did you, <laughs> did you date? Did you like, what was that like? Or did you, kind did of you dated, well, but not really. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we would still call ourselves partners, but okay. Um, in the loose sense of it, the, I met him through a friend on in one of my groups that i'm a friend with and i met him on um <laughs> tumblr of all places yeah mm -hmm. so you know we started talking and one thing led to another and you know he wanted to have a chance uh, basically he wanted to have a change in his life and he wanted to grow up here and you know grow his life here in the united states mm -hmm. and me i'm a pushover nah i'm kidding i I saw potential and, and, and whatnot. And then all of a sudden we are, and also our interests aligned, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, you know, we, we made plans to have him come stay here and his parents helped him get here. And <gasps> so. Did they know about the, no. the nature? No. Um, yeah. My parents know. Um, oh yeah. wow that's he's incredible that is incredible yeah you, that's very anything. uncommon to hear that yeah i was, we rarely hear that i mean um among anyone so that's just incredible well i have a pretty open relationship with my parents because they've been really like you know uh good about it they weren't really judgmental or anything that like is that. awesome um, that's amazing mm -hmm. and believe me they are like religious and they wow. don't like um gay people and stuff like that and even then um when they you know they will ask me like why do you do this why do i do that um and i just told him like you know there's something that some people like there's something that some people dislike and it's just like that there's no like explaining like as long as you're happy they're mm. happy right that's kind of like the mentality they went with it's so, wonderful mm -hmm. So a lot that's that's what a lot of people don't get that they also feel like they are gonna get judged really harshly or they will feel embarrassed or in mm -hmm. most cases it will be weird for a partner uh, a par a parent to like know that their child does those do those things but it's still like you know they're still your family mm -hmm. so that's I why love they this me and um, you know made it possible and this is not even my first time attempting this because I've met like some auto people before and I tried the same thing. Like I tried living in Texas before with another um ABDL daddy and that mm -hmm. did not work. <laughs> not at all. For you know a couple of reasons. It was also mostly because the relationship did not work all that well. Mm -hmm. But I, I I don't know there was something that just kind of clicked when I came here and our dynamic just you know it, it was the, um, mm -hmm. the kind of relationship we had was something that we were both benefiting of and mm -hmm. it's just i don't know it, it worked out it worked out. awesome so how yeah. long did you two i guess talk get to know each other before there were plans to uh, make a life together i would say no more than what i'd say probably between uh you know uh, about nine months to a year mm -hmm. yeah and um you 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 kind of get to know somebody and you yeah. and of course even when we spoke during that time there was times where you know we would get mad at each other and whatnot so we kind of already knew what to expect as far as that goes mm -hmm. uh-huh um uh, so you know but well, it, that's not <laughs> that's lovely because it tells you that you're being authentic with one another you're being real your real selves if you didn't fight that would be bizarre i think, uh, I think that if you don't fight you're not yeah. you're not alive that you're doing it wrong and and i think you have some sort of i think you're right in your you're right. in your relationship of some sort if, and if both of them are saying yes that means um one of them is doing all the thinking for the other one like there's no you know like two way th there's not the same amount of effort like one person is doing all the work we still have arguments it's okay <laughs> which is 
<laughs> yeah, perfectly healthy. Right. Well, it's arguments you're, that's you're natural. Too different. If you have yeah, I think, I think conflict is perfectly yourself, good. and you know yeah. who you are and you're not necessarily doing things to please the other person, then you will have, well, maybe not arguments all the time, but you'll have disagreements. You won't always, you won't always see eye to eye. And I, I think that- Disagreements, really yes. Yeah. Definitely, you mm -hmm. know, I, like I say, I've had other, other littles. Uh, I would say, Every experience has been a little different than the first, you know, and I think the first was really, how do I want to put it, was more, I don't know, it, I guess it was really a learning experience for me mm -hmm. to know how to take care of things uh -huh. and you yes. know, care for someone and because this the uh, this individual that I cared for, he also he had to wear medically anyways. Mm. So constant, okay, we got to have diapers. Mm -hmm. we, we got to have this. We have to have that. You know. Um, but we don't have that in our relationship, though. <laughs> that's because I'm lousy at it. No, it's Anywho. not because <laughs> you're lousy. It's because I'm not, you know, dependent on it. Yeah, he's but not dependent on it. So it's also... like. You know, that's also something that I would say is very uh, different from our dynamic. And it's that we we are not full-time baby and daddy, mm -hmm. right? We're not. Um, okay. We, we have a relationship just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that our relationship is kind of like spicy. We, we also have... Mm -hmm. We also have other lives that we have to take care of. Me being married now and... Um, so I have to create a balance mm -hmm. between, you know, Growy and my husband and, 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 and also and for yourself too. Yeah. And, and for myself, mm -hmm. he's very independent. So he does like to have his space. And so, yeah, I have to give that to him, but there are also moments where, where we are able to, to enjoy that. And, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, what, what you were dressed up in a onesie and a diaper. Well, yeah, but. No, all right. No, you were, and you slept with me last night. Cuddle, lots of cuddle. <laughs> okay, so he's he's getting red, so it's okay. <laughs> no, no uh, shame so here. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we do the ABDL things. You would expect from a baby and daddy mm -hmm. stuff, right? It's just not as common or as we don't do it as often, often. because, like, like he said, we got like our own separate thing going on like we got our own lives and we like that's how open relationships are sometimes because there's not like you a know the, mm -hmm. exactly it's not constant you're not completely dependent on the other person he also works um he's got a job here mm -hmm. and, and so he works during the day i work from home during the day mm -hmm. So there is that as well, but mm -hmm. you know, we're always checking in with each other and, you know, we still, every day, we still make sure that we connect and, you know, there is, and then there's, you know, we'll, mm -hmm. we've, we've taken trips together where we've been able to enjoy the lifestyle as well. And that's been fun. I mean, we, we've had fun. No. What do you mean? Well, Can you give examples? To, uh, <laughs> we took a trip to San Francisco, which was really nice. Um, and so, you know, I made sure he had his diapers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So we went out for the day and, and whatnot. He wasn't dressed mm -hmm. like a baby, obviously. I, I mean, San Francisco is one of those places you could probably do it. Nobody would yeah. think twice. Well, get <laughs> Agreed. When we went to sure, Vegas, yes. now yeah. he was. Yeah. <laughs> We went to Vegas for uh, oh. Gay Pride in 2022, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was just not too long after you got here. Correct. So we, um, you know, those are a couple of memorable trips. And we, we, were, we like doing that. It, mm -hmm. it does help to keep things going and relevant. But then there are other times where you just get burnt out. I'm I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, if yeah. I was a full time dad, yes. I I don't, know how, yes. I don't know how real dads do it because there Thank are you. days that I am just like, and I, I love I that you, yeah, 
on this hard. Yeah, I love that you bring that up because I do think I love your I think your dynamic yes. is is great. And I do believe in balance and I think sometimes there's when I talk to boys and um Ethan and Terry, I'd like to know your thoughts on this, but sometimes when I talk to boys, there is this kind of fantasy of yeah. me being a dad all the time, nonstop. Yeah. But um, just with how, just because they don't, they've never actually attempted that and they don't necessarily realize the, the resources that go into all of that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely more demanding than you would think. Mm -hmm. And it's not just demanding from the standpoint of one person. It's demanding for both because both parties that are involved are looking to get out of it, yes. you know, and mm -hmm. you really have to work at it. And that, that can be very exhausting. Mm -hmm. You could also bring the uh, economical aspect of it. Oh, the economical. Yeah. Oh, the economics is the big, big, big thing. I, 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 I actually want to just interject here because this is something I think about a lot. I'm well aware because even in daytime, you know, one time affairs kind of experiences, it's exhausting, but I'm not, I, I actually have this sort of model I keep working on and tweaking in my head that it will be like 22 hours a day and five days a week and the rest is adult time, time off. And like, you could do whatever the hell you want, but five days a week and 22 hours a day, you're going to be a baby. <laughs> that may be totally bananas, uh, but I, that's, well, that's a goal. There's nothing wrong Hashtag with goal. that. I, I personally, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that because, um, you know, there are boys out there that may want that attention. I've had people hit me up. Oh, I want to come and live with you full time. And that's we can right. do this and we can do that. And it's like, that's not how I want to work. It's not against you, but there, there's a fantasy. Yeah. There's, a, there's a level of fa fantasy there, mm -hmm. you know, Agreed. and it's not what you think it. Yeah. And sometimes you just, of have course. To, you just have to be, how I go about it is not necessarily to dismiss it, but just say, just be like you, just be clear as, you know, this is how I operate as a dad. This is, these are yeah. my but yeah a lot of it is yeah a lot of these and just with just because there's so few dads out there anyway and just interacting with the community sometimes can be limited so a lot of these boys out here they're what drives them is 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 mostly fantasy and they don't yeah. know they don't necessarily know the the reality of it oh yeah Here's, here's my thought on fantasy and reality. Um, <laughs> okay, first of all, I think that it's very important that you communicate that the mm -hmm. thing that's the fantasy is that this is going to feel good all the time. You need to know that if you're going to do anything approximating that, it's going to feel like shit. It's going to feel frustrating. You're going to feel resentful towards me. You're going to question why you're doing this. All those things have to go in, even yeah. if it's a one day affair. Um, I, th I think it's really important to make that clear. Like, it's not always going to be fun and it's pleasant. Like it's, it and feels forced. Pollyanna it's, Rambos. It's, but it's not worth it, mm -hmm. you know. But also, I want to say something about fantasy versus reality. You, as a person, it, it, to make a life worth living, I personally feel it's important that we take our fantasies and understand that they're fantasies, but also. To materialize anything, any goal or dream or fantasy, you have to like really push yourself and live it. Uh, so I, I, I don't think there's the way you say fantasy fields and the, the way you talk about fantasy, Terry. It sounds like you you are rejecting it to some extent, and I'm I'm here to say, no, you kind of have to push the delusion. And live it, yeah. And then it becomes you, material. You make a good point. That's um, true. And you have to push. No, it I'm not trying to push mm -hmm. it away. I think I'm just trying to set the expectation. Yes. That the, the reality mm -hmm. versus the fantasy, yes. because you, you have mm -hmm. to, to live. Oh, definitely. The, the thing of it is, is 
enjoying it once in a while versus full time changes the meaning of it, the feel of it. It takes you know? the magic out of it. It becomes oh, yeah. more of an obligation <laughs> than it does, you know, uh, a choice to have fun. Mm -hmm. I'm all for fantasy. That's fine. Uh, you know, and if that's something that we're able to do mm -hmm. often, then that's great. But if you're doing it all the time, it becomes mundane. It becomes, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it becomes just kind of another it's not reflex of life. Yes. So, what I, I wouldn't know. say I was rejecting yeah. it. I'm just saying that you, it is entirely possible to transition from fantasy to reality. But it's just in terms of sometimes it's just you can't have it all or mm -hmm. it's just things that aren't going to be feasible. Like we can make compromises. We can make yeah. we can say like, OK, I am i can't do this, but, you know, yeah. I'd be willing to do that. It may not. It may not, the execution of it may not yes. be, like be exactly um, exactly what the fantasy was. But I, I do believe that through communication and, and compromise, you can get it you know, fairly close. Yeah. I, I think, that, that's I, think how I, I think it really all comes well. down to just communication and expectations between, you know, the two parties, mm -hmm. you know, you communicate what, what it is that you're expecting mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. you're, you know, what, what you're willing to not willing. I, I don't want to say that, but what it is that, you know, you expect to get out of this. And the other person has the same right. That way, you know, pretty much that you're always on the same page. Because if you're the one that's doing all the work and putting yeah. it all out, and the other one's not doing anything for you, it becomes even more of a consumption. And thank you. You, you do become resentful. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you become resentful because you feel like, well, what, what am, yeah. what are we doing here? You know. You know what. The, the the relationship I had with the guy in Texas that did not work out at all. Mm -hmm. The guy that the excuse he gave me was that I wanted to be a little all the time. And I could not understand what he meant by that because on one on one side, you as a little have a personality that matches the things that you like, right? So you might come mm -hmm. out as childish sometimes. You might want to like care be around or stuff like that right you're not mm -hmm. an adult 100 percent at heart right so then to your partner to see you in their eyes as like oh you're just childish and like you do this because you want attention and whatnot instead of being like oh this is who you are and this is the way you're expressing yourself and you know it's not just the fantasy of oh i want to be a baby all the time is that that's also kind of who you are mm -hmm. Right. And so you as a dad, yes. you have to enable those kind of behaviors or limit it if it's like too much, you know, like it's all about communicating with your partner. Like, hey, I think, you know, being too, you know, pushy or, mm. you know, whatever the situation is. But that's also something that I got hit really hard because. On the one hand, you're like, yeah, I want to, you know, be myself with my partner. But then on the other hand, this might be really tiring for them because I am just trying to be, you know, a, a baby all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so when you bring in like adult responsibilities mm -hmm. and actual relation responsibilities into the, the mix, it's like, you know, doing chores and like paying bills and like going to work and, you know, doing things an adult would do you know and kind of like excusing yourself like oh i don't have to do that because i'm baby or whatever that is i on my in my understanding that's kind of like not the way to go about it because of course the other person will get tired really fast mm -hmm. because if they're always like oh i don't pick up pick stuff up because i'm baby i don't cook because i'm baby i don't drive <laughs> because i'm baby i don't want to go do my oil change because i'm baby right so then it becomes more of an, like an excuse and whatever, then you are just, you know, playing, trying to fit into your little fantasy that you're just a baby and everything has to be done for you. And I just think that's, I don't know, crippling mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. It's funny that you should say that because mm -hmm. I still even consider mm -hmm. you my little, even when you're not in little headspace, even though you're doing things and you're, you're going, you're yeah. going to work or you're, you're cleaning or you're doing something. I still consider that because that's how I see you, but I don't see you as, 
oh, you know, he can't or he wants me to do everything, which is good. But there are some people out there that would love to have that type of lifestyle where you wait on them hand and foot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, that, I think that, there's a time and, time and place that. something that I feel like, you know, it, you go into little space. For, at least for me, I do it to relax and kind of like rest, you know, and kind of like not think about my adult things for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then kind of like going back into it, I'm more refreshed now that I have to, you know, not deal with it all day. Right. So I get back from work and I, you know, get diapered or whatever. And I enjoy a little time with, um, with Terry. Right. And then I don't have to think about the, the things that stress me about my day and stuff. And it's like an exit out of like, you know, my lifestyle, but it's still, I'm still a, an adult. Right. We still, we still have responsibilities. And then Mm -hmm. if you think about like the fantasy, let's say, um, I want everything done for me. I want him to pay for everything. I want him to, you know, buy me all the diapers. I want him to check me every 10 minutes and I want him to know exactly what I'm thinking. And it's just exactly nobody's ever going <laughs> to. Good <do> luck. <laughs> I've been with my husband for 20 years and I still don't know what he wants all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, it, it goes yeah. both ways. Mm-hmm. Like you as a little cannot understand anything you're, you know, your big is thinking all the time. And so, I don't know, communication is such a big part of why the relationship work in the first place, mm-hmm. because we understand, you know, we understand the, the boundaries. We understand that the other person has a certain needs. So like, I need to drop out some of the stuff that I'm doing during my day to give him attention because he needs it, right? Because he's my partner. And I'm doing like the effort to make the relationship work. And he does the same for me, right? He goes out of his way to like help me or, you know, check on me and make sure I'm like good and stuff like that. It's not just because I'm, you know, baby, but because he like worries about my well being. Right. He genuinely cares for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be a little for me to mm-hmm. speak. I, when he becomes a, a big or an adult and he's doing his adult things, the the caring doesn't doesn't end there. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I this is an education for me at so many levels, um, and I appreciate that. It reminds me of this uh, some of the things I've been reading in my own time about uh, how to set up dom sub relationships more generally. Uh, and the guy, the author of this book that I'm reading, it's called Cons- the, the Heart of Dominance, the, A Guide to Practicing Consensual Dominance. Uh, the guy wow. who's the author, Anton Fullman, says that you have to think about these relationships as if they're fundamentally like any other vanilla relationship, but there's some added piece to it that is sort of built out of there. And the fundamental piece is like the communication you know, the, the love of respect for one another and things like that. So it sounds like that's what they're describing. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It, 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 at the core, it's still, you know, I, I'd i say basically what he's saying is at, at the core of any relationship, it's still, it doesn't matter if it's vanilla or kink or whatever, it's still, it still has the same, yeah. right. you know, structure and, 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 necessity and we we sometimes i think people struggle to understand that that has to be that way in order for it to work yeah i do think mm-hmm. i do think that yes. there, like i, I think understand that that i, I am think, struggling with that <laughs> and we talked about this a little bit in our i think our last episode but i do think it's important to have like established roles like i'm the dad and you're the little but there has to be some level of balance in all of it yeah can i can i add to this my question based on what you're saying terry and growy is that it is about the age difference is there something to i i assume that you're different ages ages. i I don't know anything but that's cool okay 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 Okay, okay. But does that play yes. into the dynamics yes, that you're describing? I would absolutely 
have to say yes. Mm -hmm. We don't like the same things. We don't listen to the same music. He likes, okay. you know, to watch different shows. And that's cool in a way mm -hmm. because I get to learn about, you know, all these things about his culture and, you know, America in the 90s and 80s or whatever. And he also gets to be updated on what us, you know, people are thinking now, you know. Yeah. We, we do it to each other by force, of course, you know. No, I, <laughs> no, I, I, I get that. But the, the reason I the reason I asked is because I was interested in like, you know, Terry, you were suggesting that, you know, you, you're care, you're very caring almost in a dadly way, uh, yeah. even when he's not in little space. And I wonder if that's just, I mean, you obviously are that kind of person, but if someone with your husband, are you to the same extent, like a, a, a daddy sort of caregiver in non-little space? I mean, do you know what I'm getting at? Well, I'm, I'm having trouble so articulating for, it exactly. For, for Growy, it's more of a, you know, like I, I try role. to kind of guide him, you know, uh -huh. and, and teach, te yeah, kind mm -hmm. of teach him. As a mentor. Not only is he, you know, younger than me, he's new here to, to America. So the culture is different. The rules yeah. are different. The expectations are different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to teach him that. I mean, I, he learns on his own for the most part, but mm -hmm. still there are mm -hmm. those aspects where it's like, well, you know, yeah. I don't really offer advice per se anymore because I used to do that and nobody would ever take it. And then I would get mad. <laughs> So all I would say is, you know, these are the options yeah. that you have, you know, these are the things that you're able to do, you know. Yeah, but tell him about mm -hmm. what's the difference between me and your husband, because the way you, you deal with um, your husband is a lot different. Than, oh, with my know. husband, my, my husband and, and I'm very interested in domestic stuff, you know, we got to pay bills we got to take care of the house we got to make sure mm -hmm. that everybody's fed we got to make sure the animals are fed you know the normal everyday things you mm -hmm. know oh i got to go to work you got to work we got to do this we got to do that you know so the relationship i have with my husband is is much different than the relationship I have with growing but that's also because the expectations mm -hmm. uh, i think are different and Definitely. and it's not because they have to be mm -hmm. it's just because I think the mentality that I have puts me in the role of more of a paternal figure to, to growing. Let me say it's worth mentioning that his husband is not into diapers, right? So that part of him that does not get to, you know, share all of that, that he feels about diapers and the way he wants to express himself mm -hmm. because he loves wearing diapers and I diaper him all the time. Yes, he does diaper right but the mm -hmm. way he wants to express those things he cannot express mm -hmm. with his husband so that's why i'm a part of his relationship Definitely. i am not anything to his husband i like we have a kind of like a roommate relationship where mm -hmm. we're friends together and like i acknowledge his existence right <laughs> and and we no and we are still friends. Like I would consider myself a friend of his husband and we do stuff together. And, you know, we talk like, you know, regular roommate relationship, yeah. but then our connection is through Terry mm -hmm. because that's the part of the, like, that's like the fun part, you know, and we express to each other that kind of fun. Um, and then he gets to do all of his other relationship stuff with his husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why we're more independent of each other because the open relationship. Part. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, at, at one point, my husband and I, we did kind of experiment with him being, um, you know, my daddy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he really does try and mm -hmm. I'll give it to him. He, he actually, you know, really was interested in making that work. And I think That's that I, of him. there's part of that still wants to it's mm -hmm. just i think it's hard for me to see it that way yeah and it, mm -hmm. it's not that i don't want to i think i get that that um there's a couple mm -hmm. of things it's hard for me to see him in that role but the other thing is is i think the role that i want for me 
for somebody to care for me, I don't think he's capable of providing that because he's very soft. He's very kind. He's very, you know, gentle and, and, and everything. And that's great. But, but sometimes I like him. to be, huh? You have to give it to him because every single time, let's say we're going to host a party, right? And we oh invite God, all yeah. of our little friends, then his husband is the one that gets all of their crayons and he gets all of the stuff That's we nice. play with. That's and really he's nice. the one that That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We watch party. Oh, we've man. got we've got a we've got a corner here with cars and blocks mm -hmm. and and supplies and whatnot. Right. And then he thinks of all of those things because he's making the effort of you know being a part of the community. Yeah, that's even that's though beautiful. he's not mm -hmm. that's wearing wonderful. diapers himself or changing yeah. nobody, right? Because he 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 also belongs in here, even though he does not share the same you know interest. Yeah, he's a part of the community. Exactly. Yeah. That's, so that, that's 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 amazing. That's, that's really nice. That aspect, that's really I'm special. very fortunate. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate. Yes. This is a question for both Terry and Growing. So Terry, you talked about you had mentioned like when you had. I guess your earlier days as a dad that you didn't necessarily know how to be a dad or or, or, or all that. I, I want to know how you know, you know you've really grown into the role as dad and how and how well. Mm -hmm. it, this is the thing. That, mm -hmm. This is the mm -hmm. thing that got me. So you know, not having kids, I've never had kids, and. The only kids that I've ever cared for, aside mm -hmm. from myself, is has been my brother and sister. I mean, my sister's six years younger than me, so I don't really, you know, consider them kids. Um, even when we were growing up, I, I consider them little brats. But um, when mm -hmm. I met my first little, uh, you know, like I said, it, it was more of just kind of a hangout thing, and then. He started to come around a little bit more and I started to show more interest in what it is he had going on with his life and try to offer up. This is where I tried to offer up advice and stuff. And, you know, he, he, he looked up to me. Mm -hmm. We still talk. He's still my friend. Um, he, he rents a room out at my, at my nephew's mm -hmm. house. Um, but he lived with me for about uh -huh. seven years. And through that time, you know, we mm -hmm. it came down to there would be days that I would take him to work and pick him up or I'd make sure he had lunches or uh, if he needed gas money or he needed to whatever it was, it would generally I would help out if there was something that needed to be done. And then I would always check with his well-being mm -hmm. and we would talk all the time. He would call me every day on his way to work if he was driving by himself. He would call breaks on his lunch, you know, Aww. and so I always made time for him. And that was mm -hmm. for him, just making the time for him was very important. He, he felt very good about it because growing up, you know, he, you know, he had a dad, he had a family mm -hmm. that he lived with, you know, he grew up with them. He, they were his parents and his brother's but his dad was killed in 2008. And so he lived just with his mom and his siblings. And so that, that kind of changed things. He didn't have mm -hmm. a, a fatherly role at, at that point. And so when he met me, I think I, I think mm -hmm. more than anything, I think sure. I filled that void for him. And so in, in the, in the, in the baby side of things, you know, everything was always, you know, I was always kind and gentle with him. And, you know, I would always make sure that he had everything he needed as far as, you know, if we took a trip, he had all his clothes that he needed and made sure that he was fed and, you know, those things, you know, just basically being a parent. <laughs> but I, like I say, I had no intention of having mm -hmm. that role. It just, mm -hmm. I guess it came natural that I had that role. Um, and I, I basically tried to treat him how I would have wanted to have been treated when I was younger. My parents, uh, they weren't bad. They weren't bad. We just kind of were, I, I'm an eighties child, you know, so <laughs> kind of did whatever, but with him, it was all, I even asked about his family. I would always ask, well, mm -hmm. how's your mom? How's your brother's? 
you know, and then he would go into a rant about what his mom was doing. I'm like, I'm really sorry that you have to deal with that. You know, I did, we did end up having him move in with us, even while I was living with my um, husband's parents. We were, we were renting a room out of his uh, parents' house. And <laughs> so here we have this kid that moves in with us. You know, and he's almost 30 now, so he would have been probably closer to 18, 19, maybe. And basically, we we went over to his mom's house and helped him get his stuff out. And his mom wasn't the most pleasant person, but I, I, I kept mm-hmm. my respect level for him. You know, so I think those are a combination of those things had helped me to understand how to be a better, let's say, parent uh, figure, a parental figure. You know, mm-hmm. as as of any parent, there's no, no rule book, I mean, so you're always yeah, going to make Being mistakes. a dad, there's no, we would there's no rule book. It's oh, so man. You just have to be in it and experience <laughs> can it. I, yeah. Can I ask something? As a... Huh? Make a lot of mistakes. Make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I would never, never end. Yeah. I, would, I would like to ask the three of you because yeah. you all are, you know, tops or like dads, right? So I would like to know what it is that makes you a daddy because I would think of myself because I, so lately I feel more like a DL mm-hmm. than an AB, right? So I'm fitting a lot into this um, big bro role for a bunch of my friends that I have are, you know, more child Uh or baby, um, like the AB side, they have it more strongly. And then I would like to ask the three of you what it is that makes you, you know, considered or what do you think of yourself when you're calling or you're getting the tag of, you know, daddy because to me that's really interesting of it is not just like oh i'll change your diapers right because that doesn't really cut there's a lot more to it than oh no <laughs> you wanna i'll, I'll like you i like ethan to like tell me what he yeah thinks. kick it off ethan. whomever I, I like to think of it as a, a lot of the things that Terry has mentioned already that I like to think of myself as a mentor and a guide and a counselor and a cheerleader and an advocate and a, uh, a chaplain, a, a, a preacher, <laughs> a, a teacher, a professor, a uh, rabbi. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and all these things. And I, I really personally, am, I, I, I see how everybody has a different perspective on this than I do, but I personally want my little to be a little and not a partner and not a um not not a friend not a buddy not even like a lover exactly because i don't want it to be an egalitarian relationship although i do see your perspective terry in all of this there is got to be Uh, downtime uh (laughs) Uh, in in adult time seriously baked into this dynamic uh, but I, 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 my, my idea is that even like you were sort of alluding to yourself, that even when there's no little space involved and maybe not even diapers on, uh, I'm still the sage mentor guide, whatever. Uh, I think that that's what it means to be a dad, and then changing the diapers and caring for all the physical so needs. So that's like that's the area of entry for you to be considered a a daddy right because you gotta for you to be a mentor you have to have a certain set of like skills and knowledge right behind you to back you up right so th- there's so. something right there mm-hmm. that you consider that you kind of have to have as a daddy right is there something else you would like to add to it i like that mm-hmm. to like your definition about I, I only decided to be, I was more DL most of my life. And then I realized I wanted to be a daddy when I was 40 on the nose. I hit 40 and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> oh shit, I'm having a midlife crisis. But also I need to be a daddy because holy shit, I have lived so much and seen so many things and experienced every emotion in the in the textbook of emotions that one can experience. 
And I've, I've seen so many different things and, and, and been so many different places and worked so many different jobs and had so many different careers. At this point, I feel like I have so much to offer a young person yeah. and they don't have to be it's, young necessarily, but it here. helps because that the, the, the inexperience is what I have to shine light on uh, as a dad. Yeah, definitely. And, but that was a decision that I made. It was nobody that told me that said, like, oh, you should be dad because you have all this wisdom accrued. I just thought I, I know myself well enough by this point Would that this you, is what I have um, to do. Be open to like, you, you know, there, there's a saying that you're not like the only interesting person out there. That's why you should like try and see the good in everybody else and stuff. Um, and I would understand that. So like, of course, as a little, a person can still have a, a background of careers and knowledge and they could be 40 year old and they could still be a little, right? Because it doesn't really like, you don't just transition into being a daddy, right? Or how about if you are a 22 year old and you don't have a lot of experience in your belt, but you still have that pattern, that paternal, like instinct, instinct exactly. That you mm -hmm. want to give, you want to care mm -hmm. for. Um... You're shining light on something that's very backwards in my thinking about this. And I, I have trouble figuring out how to back out of this corner I put myself in. I, I do see exactly what you're getting at. And I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm resolved. <laughs> you know, I wonder what other people you think. Know, when, you, it's something that, it's something that if you're in, if you really corner. want to look into changing, it's something you'll have to work at. I mean, everything else like i didn't get yeah. to be where i'm at as far as being a daddy and going through all these experiences without having to learn some mm -hmm. of it and well most of it anyways but like i like i said before the the experiences that i've had every one of them has been different than the other and um mm -hmm. <laughs> it could really change how you view being a daddy because i will tell you there are some times that i've been like what yes. the heck am mm -hmm. i doing and i think what, that's that's always here, you know because at least for me yeah uh, yes there's always going to be i mean that happens to me all the time uh, where i'm just oh like, yeah Ugh. universal like yeah. i'm supposed to be the dad i'm supposed to have but i think it's sometimes putting unrealistic expectations on myself that I'm always supposed to have the answer, that I'm always supposed to, you know, have yeah. a solution in a moment. And sometimes I just don't. And so what I've learned as being a dad is just to give myself grace more, to be more understanding of, you know, I'm not perfect. Um, I'm not always mm -hmm. going to have everything together, wow. but um, I can certainly try. <laughs> yeah. We strive to be perfect sometimes, and I think that's our. Mm -hmm. I think that's a downfall of of being play that. <laughs> oh, I don't. Did I give you the impression <laughs> that I'm perfect? Oh, but <laughs> but it goes back to that me. expectation that littles have. You you want see for me being the daddy. Yes, is, that's is, right is being able to see the joy yeah. on somebody's face when I, you know, take care of them in the way that they want to be cared, cared for and nurtured and, you know, be put through the steps because mm. somebody else's happiness is contagious. You, you, you get energy from that, you know, that's, that's where that give and take kind of starts. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, that's, that's kind of like the other sure. side of what you were saying before, Ethan, then you're not just sharing your knowledge. You're not just, you know, leading the way. You're just not guiding this person, but you're also enabling them and helping them through, you know, mm -hmm. channeling their feelings, helping them feel more small, giving them a safe, you know, place or just yeah. putting that, you know, letting them put that trust in you that you're not going to hurt them and make yes. them. I think that's. I think the, right? just the, yeah, the vulnerability, yes. Mm -hmm. 
the ability to just create a space, a safe space for someone to, you know, be vulnerable or to regress, just show you their heart, just show you their soul. Like that's really what I get out of it. I, I love to say about ABDL that if this is like one thing that we all share in common as diverse as we are, it's like a commitment to personal growth and the journey of life. I do feel like, and the joy that comes with this activity or identity or community, I think it's all, the, 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 the main thing is that we're all on this journey somehow and we see it as a journey. I, I think that's so near universal uh, to the ABDL experience. I love, I love it when it comes up like that. And can we call it a wrap? Did it, did it? <laughs> Thank you. I think you do have a, an absolutely phenomenal relationship. I can just tell just from talking with you in an hour, just the, the amount of care that you have. For it's beautiful. Time. And I think what you have is, is really, really special. So I just wanted to, again, say thank you for mm -hmm. your time today and just sharing your experiences. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Oh yeah, definitely was uh, such fun and, you know, sharing our thoughts and stuff. It's just very exciting. <laughs> nice to be able to share that with other people. Yeah. All righty. Well, all right. that is all the time we have today. Yeah. Take care, kiddos. We'll see you next time.